All right. Let's get back to these rankings. We got number 17. 17, which I think probably could have been 16. We gave Doug a whole lot of love there, and we kind of prefaced it a little bit. With, yeah, this next guy that we, when you start watching him, it's it's pretty silly. It's awesome. So yeah. we're, we went, uh, we got Allen Robinson on the docket. Yeah. AR-15. AR-15. At AR-15. I like that. If you want to holler at him. Nice. I love it. He just needs to go somewhere where 15 isn't taken. Right. <laughs> so, right. He can, so he can keep his Twitter handle. Right. It's a strong, <laughs> strong to quite strong Twitter handle. Very strong. We need a machine gun sound right now. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't a very good machine. That was like a 50 <laughs> caliber. <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible laugh by me as well. <laughs> all right, all right, let's settle down. Everyone settle down. All right, let's get into the what we like and what we saw about uh, old Allen Robinson here. Obviously, you had the 2015 as a sophomore there, which is a, a pretty uh, tough show to, to top there, especially with Blake Bortles as your quarterback. Right. Uh, but I mean, as, as as both of us, I think dug a little more into sixteen. You're going back, and I think because the bar was set so high. Yeah, from what I remember, sixteen wasn't was good a at dumpster all. fire. Yeah, it was but terrible. It really wasn't that bad. No, um, he did a little. He did less with the around the same amount of targets, but it really. I don't think they were the same quality targets. I think Blake no Bortles kind of, you know, was had taken shots from. 14 and 15, he was the most sacked quarterback in the league. Obviously, 15 was the big year that Allen Robinson had, and Al, it was kind of his coming out party. You can maybe attribute it to some of it of, of you know, nobody really knowing about Allen Robinson and, and a lot of fourth quarter kind of heaves and heaves all over the quarter, regardless of what quarter it was, mm -hmm. and, and kind of him showing up. And then 16 comes in, and when you watch the tape of what's the ball is going to Allen Robinson, even when he's open, He's, you know, he's having to climb up the ladder and grab those things or they're far right. They're far left. He's Super having to low. he's having to keep his toes in bounds and go catch it out of bounds. And he's doing all he's scooping it up out of the dirt. He's doing all these things. But also Blake's, you know, setting him up to take a couple of shots here and there, which, you know, it could be there's only so shots much, to your body, not right, like downfield. Right. Yeah, there's there's only so much, you know, a guy can take here. You, you kind of have you have more attempts. Um in, in 16 that then in 15 out of, out of Blake Bortles but they're just they're for uh, you, you lose about 500 yards in there which is a decent right. drop off especially with a, a receiver like Allen Robinson right so in in 15 he had 80 receptions for 1400 yards and 14 touchdowns this is a ridiculous right year. it's a huge 14 is a huge number right and then in 2016 he he still had 30 or sorry 73 catches but but only 900 yards and six touchdowns 883 right Right, it's almost 900 yeah. yards. There was a lot of a lot of highs and lows through that 150 targets that he had, um, which was good for ninth in the league. But they weren't consistent targets, right? So he had eight games with five or more targets, and he did well in all those games from a from a fantasy standpoint. Um, but then there were four games with three targets, three games with two targets, and then against Minnesota he had one target. So yeah. like, I don't know why they weren't getting this dude at least five targets a game, but they blew it because Blake Bortles was third in attempts, like you said, a lot, 627 in 2016, but he was 31st in completion percentage, 31st in yards per attempt, 30th in QBR. Like, this dude right. is faux good. Like, I, he's fake goods. I want to come back to that point I was making how he got sacked the most in 14 and 15, which I think that kind of, again, makes you a little, probably a little quicker on the trigger, and, and I don't think Blake needs to be much quicker on the trigger, and it made yeah. him... Pretty, you know, maybe a little bit more volatile and inaccurate. Um, I think I think all that maybe plays in. I could be completely wrong, but that's kind of what I was seeing. I went back and watched a ton of 2016 tape on Allen Robinson just to see what the story was here. Um, and that, that's kind of what I was seeing, er erratic throws. And, and Blake's the, the offensive line in 16 still wasn't good for most of the season. When Marone took over, you saw the run game step up and the line get a little better. For whatever reason, he is an offensive line kind of coach, offensive mind kind of guy. Yeah. Um, so I think all that kind of plays into to the bad the we say bad sixteen, but it really wasn't that bad of a sixteen. I think you your your Allen Robinson on a yearly basis is somewhere in between the fifteen and sixteen Allen Robinson. Right. Yeah, and I mean I'm all that that fifteen was, was so silly that I just I just can't wait. I can't wait. I I personally want him to go somewhere else. I don't think I want him to stick around in Jacksonville. He's a free agent. Um, we were debating whether or not they could franchise tag him. The, the I was cap, reading something the cap about the situation isn't great over there. It's not the best. They're going to have to to clear up some room. Um, whether or not they keep Blake Bortles, they did pick up Blake Bortles' fifth year option um, like forty eight hours before the deadline uh, last year. 
But that money's only guaranteed for injury, right. so he's not hurt. They can cut him. They could cut him. They could also cut Alan Hearns, which is probably a strong possibility. Right. But they you also have Marquise Lee, who's a free agent, Alan Robinson, who's a free agent. Um, so you, you're probably trying to bring one of those guys back, but then you have Westbrook and Keelan Cole, who you can pretty much get for peanuts. Yeah, they're um, paying them rookie contracts. And I would think Marquise Lee's probably cheaper than Alan Robinson, so if you wanted probably. to bring one back, you probably could bring Marquise back. Right. I don't know. Just just spitballing here. Right. Yeah, and, and I don't think there's no way that, that Allen Robinson's gonna hang around for another year of Blake Bortles. Right. Right? No, I mean you you have you have a guy here in, in Blake who all the things that we just talked about and he had a, a pretty good season for the most part this year, I guess, and he had a nice stretch run there near the back half of the season, but then you saw him kinda come unraveled mm-hmm. and be Blake Bortles the last couple of games and then in this last playoff game that you saw he wasn't really good. He did. He did help them win. He ran around. Old <laughs> old Blake Vic. Really. He was. Yeah, I don't know how he gained so much confidence from eighty three <laughs> rushing yards, but the fact that he had more rushing yards right. than passing yards would have discouraged defense, me a little. But his defense is basically like a goaltender standing on his head in the playoffs for, mm-hmm. for hockey. That's a hockey reference. Yeah. In case you guys. <laughs> well, what's hockey? Yeah, I don't know. Some weird winter sport. Yeah. It'd be um, better if they played on grass instead of ice and use a <laughs> use a football instead of a puck. But what, um, whatever. But I do I do think that if he ended up back in Jacksonville on a on a do on a high pitch, um, <laughs> that, I mean I think he could thrive again. Um, mm-hmm. But I I just even if Blake was still his guy, I don't think Blake would be his guy. I think that would have to be part of the deal of him coming back here. You know, kind of making that. He knows what the deal is with Blake. He's got to. I mean, you you know. You know, everyone knows that he knows what the deal is with Blake. Like when 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 a guy like uh, Alan Robinson, Robinson, whose character both of us have looked into it and seems to be a you know a pretty good guy, and it isn't like one of these diva wide receivers who is like just get me the damn ball, and I'm upset if you didn't throw it to me you know once every drive. He's you know you you the famous sound clip during the summer was man you know just put the fucking ball in bounds, man. Right. Like that's a frustrated guy. That's that's. At months, if not years, of aggravation building from a guy, up, right? From a guy who festering typically probably isn't that outspoken of a of a of a guy, and then to add fuel to that fire, more of a funny thing than. But you got you got Allen Robinson lying on the field, writhing in pain torn because ACL. he's got a torn ACL, and Blake Bortles comes over and gives him the double tap on, on the, that injured knee, like up, oh, rub some dirt on it, Bob. Oh well, we need God. you next. <laughs> he's like I'm out of here. Yeah, I am out of here. Yeah, I mean, I, he's he. This dude wants to learn and he wants to get better. He wants to be coached. Like I watched various sound bites and clips and videos of him where he's in practice running routes and stuff, and he's he's going up to Alan Hearns and he's asking him about his route and was he was he doing it the right way and and he's right. he's an information gatherer. Right. He wants to he wants to get better. He's and he and he's humble and he's driven and that's why which he didn't have to be he's a big guy who right. was a you know quote unquote like a vertical kind of guy who had that part of his game pretty much down and ready to roll coming into the league and he you could just kind of hang out on that and rely on that if, if, if he really wanted to be but he he's not that kind of guy he wants to learn like you said right and he and he, he is that he is an awesome vertical threat like I love the fact that he can make your play or make your day in one play he's got that 80 yard touchdown in him but he's he's not just a vertical threat. Like he's a route runner. You know, he's he's perfecting that craft. And he's he's tough. You can put him in the slot. He line up in the slot plenty. Um he'll make the tough catch over the middle. He's awesome in tight spaces, which is is awesome in the red zone. You can throw him a fade, he'll go up in the air and attack that ball, but he's not just the fade guy. He can fake that fade and hit you with a quick slant or the or the whip route. I mean, he's, his feet are phenomenal. They're yeah, that, so that was the first thing that I noticed when I was watching tape, and then going back and watching some practice. You got there's some tape of him in practice and stuff like that. Is right. Is how fast that feet that footwork is. Yeah, I mean he's he's so good up high in the air where very few people can even get on that plane. But then you know he'll go down low and dig that bad Bortles ball out of the dirt too. Um, and then and then he, he's solid after the catch. Oh yeah, uh, might be one of his best qualities. Like right. he's he he's tough to bring down. He's he's relentless. You can have him by the ankle and the foot, and he'll drag you as long as it takes to try to get free. I saw multiple times where he did that. Um, going back to sixteen, 
and watching all that tape time and time again on third and, and whatever and and what the times they went for it on fourth down, it was Allen Robinson every time. And and nine times out of ten, he picked it up for him when when they really needed it, regardless of what the situation is and where he was going, you know, in the route and all that kind of stuff. He 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 was ready to roll. You put the ball near him, he knows it's a big situation. He'll you know, he's doing everything he can to, you know, help help his guys stay on the field. Um the, the, the biggest and best thing I think that I like about this guy is, is the thing that I picked up the most was I think that he's a really high-end cheater. Like, he's yeah. really good at cheating. Yeah. Uh, which I think is is a necessary thing. You to got be, it. You ain't cheating, to you ain't be, trying. Right. To be a, a, a good receiver in this league or to be a, a good D-back in this league, you have, to, you have to cheat. You have to hold. You have to push. You have to do all that, but you have to be good at it. Discreetly. And the, right. Discreetly, discreetly. Which is what really is really shows up to me with Allen Robinson. You have a guy who is, is pretty long and, and it's easy to, to identify if he's extending that arm and, and using it to gain separation, i.e. you saw Mike uh, Evans this year a couple yeah. of times get called for some pass interference because it's kind of hard to miss. He's a big dude, but he's not doing it in the right place. He's he's Every time you see that pass interference coming out, he's engaging high with the defender. Like Allen right. Robinson is... You saw that with Calvin Benjamin in right, the playoffs. Right. Allen Robinson is really good at discreetly keeping that hand low near like the low torso kind of hip waist area and just giving you that little shove when he's either at the top of his route trying to gain separation. He'll... he'll, he'll kind of give you that like hard jab kind of to the torso a little bit. That's it's, it's, it's a nice little nuance, but, and it's also when he's, you know, there's a, there's a ball in the air or a jump ball and, and they're both guys are kind of hand checking. He nine times out of 10 is the guy who gets the last shove in. And it's, it's never like a big noticeable shove, but it's just enough. He's a strong dude. He's a physical frame to just, it's, it, it's just something that is, is, a lot of guys don't possess, and I think he's really good at it. I know it sounds ridiculous that you have to be a good cheater, but like no, it makes that, that's kind of what I came away with at the end. That was my biggest takeaway yeah. from watching him of what he can do. And you, you couple all that with being that vertical threat, which, you know, again, why he is good at going up and getting the ball is because he can jump, but he's also good at winning that hand-checking battle. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got to do. Any of the good DBs are going to hold you. They're right. going to pull you. They're going to push fight. you. You got to fight right. your way off of that. And, and a lot of the times, if you fight your way off of that, you're going to get called for it, especially right. if you're not doing it the right way. And I think he does it, you know, extremely well. And, uh, you know, that's one of my the, my biggest takeaways from watching as much uh, Allen Robinson as I just watched. Another, another thing about Allen Robinson, I think this dude just has star quality about him. He, he has a great smile. I think that I, you like the smile. I Good. like the smile, man. I, I could see him on on commercials. I mean, he's some people are speculating whether he should go try and get like a one year prove it deal. I think he can probably go get as much money. Somebody's as Somebody's going to want to pay him. I mean, I don't see why they would. This isn't like an Alshon Jeffrey type thing. It's not a it's not a Terrell Pryor type thing right. where they, they need to go do a one year prove it. He deal. wasn't injured beforehand. He had some really good years. He is injured now. But I mean, I guess that could be kind of your prove it. Year, I guess. I guess. But. You but know, he's so far removed from it, right? Right. It happened, it happened week, week one. one. Yeah. So he he's gonna be healthy. I have no qualms about his work ethic to get back in shape and and come back stronger than he was. And he's been, I'm sure he's been in the film room and he's been improving himself in right. in other ways besides you know practicing and playing football. And I just think that you know he's he, if he went somewhere like we you know we've mentioned it several times we want him to go over to san francisco with jimmy if they they got a ton of cap room over they there do. i mean they're gonna have to eat up some with with keeping jimmy and paying him around I they just, gotta do that i saw though, a, right? a local radio thing i think it was in in san francisco today uh, just sent out a tweet talking about how you know if he you know we're gonna we're gonna lube up and and you be gentle on us jimmy yeah <laughs> I could see San Fran starting like a GoFundMe account to try and help out and pay for some of that. Contract. I mean, they got a ton of cap room, and, and I don't know if you were Allen Robinson really why you wouldn't want to go there. Although you know Jacksonville, the the thing about Jacksonville is he's been sitting on the sidelines watching this thing kind of all come Evolve, together man. now. And if he did get a quarterback, they could be a pretty scary team. Yeah, like if Kirk came over. Yeah, or you know, pick, I don't know if they got the cap room to sign Kirk, but I'm sure they could figure it out if if they had a chance to. Yeah, um, but. He can do so many things well. I think he just needs a chance to be that elite red zone threat that we know he can be, and we kind of saw it in 2015. 
Um, and hopefully we'll kind of see that in the next landing spot. Yeah. You can do everything else, but the red zone is really where you're going to get right. the most out of this guy. I mean, I don't want to say the most because I think he's great all but over that's the where field. You're, but that's where that's your where consistent you, right. fantasy production is going to make your day and on these touchdowns. That's what he easily brings to the table, I think. Right, and I'd have no all qualms things that we just mentioned. if you wanted to draft him even higher than 16 right. I, overall. I, you I know? think I if, if I'm on the or clock, 17 if I'm on the him. clock and had to make the decision, I think... A lot of nine times out of ten, as I've played this scenario out in my head trying to make these rankings, like I think I'm going Allen Robinson over Doug Baldwin. Right. Um, but like you said, when you wa- go back and then watch Allen Robinson, which you love, and then you watch the Doug Baldwin, you're like, ah, oh, damn, this dude's a this dude's a guarantee. Right. At least for you know two three years, I think. Yeah. I mean, so I guess tough. once we know Allen Robinson's landing spot, and if it's a good one, and he's got a good quarterback, then he could shoot up well into the top fifteen for me. So. Yeah, I'm 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 good. You got anything else on? No, no I think I good. I think I'm ready to get into these kind of. I think it's a controversial. Well, maybe not controversial. Bottom three of this top twenty, but definitely maybe the last two guys are at least the way we have them. We've I know we've you and I have flip flop multiple times just on yeah. trying to get these rankings together. So I'm it's excited tough. to get into this back half. I do wish Big Co was here because he has a little bit different take on some of these guys. And and as as you do as and everybody does as you get further down the line here. You know, everyone starts to have their kind of opinions. These are kind of chalk in, in whatever order you want to take them in. So. Sure. Yeah, we're just going to try and lay it down and, and make a call. And, and then we'll, yeah. we'll probably flip-flop as the summer goes on. But this is a fun exercise. And let's go ahead and take a quick break here. We'll be back with more Mary to the Game. Stefan Diggs still thinks you're overrated. Yeah. <laughs> 